rush hour in one of London's biggest parks. Thousands of people a day drive blindly through it, commuting to their places of work. But few stop to seek the treasure that lies within. Winter has arrived in London. When temperatures plunge, there is a different kind of enchantment. The skies are a more intense shade of blue, and when the snow falls, white magic casts its spell everywhere. Just eight miles from central London exists this ecological pearl, a national nature reserve in the heart of extensive urbanization. Not only home to thousands of wildlife species, but to the largest wild mammals that remain in Britain today. Deer. This magnificent National Nature Reserve is not only home to a herd of 300 fallow deer, the spotted ones, but also to these 300 red deer, the slightly more wild looking, deeply tanned individuals. Some of whom roam its lush and varied habitats, untamed and relatively unapproachable. Others, more like lovable characters from a Disney movie. These fabled creatures have not only played a major role in the park's history, but have a profound impact on the whole of the park's ecology. As delicate snowflakes continue to fall, the chilliest day of the year has finally passed. It is now the beginning of March, and although we are slowly but surely heading into spring, it is still fairly cold. Here, a tranquil fellow buck stands motionless as he attentively looks out for any danger. Deer are herbivores and usually graze a wide variety of vegetation. However, in winter, when food is scarce, if they are to survive, they will have to become less fussy eaters and spend more time searching for food. They will start to scavenge for small buds and shoots and may even have to start consuming stripped bark from trees for a little while. Like other ruminants, at first, the deer will chew their food, only enough so that it can be swallowed. After the deer have filled their stomachs, they will peacefully lay down to chew their cud before swallowing and digesting it. After a long, frosty and demanding journey through winter, the weather starts to calm down. And the deer feel they deserve to rest for a little while. This mischievous jackdaw uses this perfect opportunity to steal hair from this black buck to use for its nest. These young bucks don't want to rest. Full of energy and adrenaline, they play fight as they begin to test their own strengths 
for battle in the future. Thankfully, no winter lasts forever and no spring skips its turn. This season is a spectacular coming back to life. As vibrant hues of green, pink and blue are daubed in sprawling bush strokes across the park's canvas. In late May, a new generation of young deer arrives. They take their first steps within 20 minutes of being born and will stay in hiding for the first few weeks of life. Spring is what I like to call the juicy green time. All the shrubs and trees take on a very vibrant green and look delicious to eat. With now plentiful nutrient rich grass, the deer seem to be much happier. In early summer, not only do they start to eat a lot more, but lays about a good deal too. Although it might be tempting for deer lovers to sneak a close up of a cute young deer, it's best to stay well clear. Because protective mothers will chase people all the way through the park, especially if you're with a dog. This is because although deer have no natural predators within the park, dogs or fleets may run after, attack and even kill young deer. The grass has gone from all fresh and new to browned by the heat of summer. And as golds and yellows illuminate the landscape, trees and shrubs reclothed in their leafy splendor dominate every corner of the terrain. And all of the lovable fawns are growing very fast and embark on their new journey in life. As they join their mothers on a never ending quest for food. Grown males shed their antlers every year, then grow a completely new set. They start casting them in February and should have a brand new set of clean antler by August. As the deer get older, the antlers get bigger, better and more majestic. We are now in mid-July and these stag's antlers are in the final throes of fraying. While those bloody strips and smears can look incredibly alarming to visitors, it is a totally normal process in which the blood vessels shrink and the velvet covering falls off in order to reveal clean antler. 
These stags are thrashing their antlers against the foliage to help rub the velvet away. Although their antlers look painful, they're not at all. Just a little itchy. Male deer only engage in fierce mating battles in October, but start to show other breeding season behaviours when the velvet is falling off their antlers. Such as adorning antlers with scooped up grass and bracken, like this stag. This is a visual display to make them look bigger and more intimidating. It is now the end of August, and as the velvet is torn to yield thick, hard antlers, all of the stags and bucks are in clean antler. And male deer start to bellow, advertising their presence prior to the imminent rut. The end of autumn has arrived, and winter is back. A time of dying, with bare trees, browned grasses, shortened days, and frigid nights. Having invested all of his time and effort into competing, this master of the rut has not only lost every ounce of fat he gained during the summer, but is exhausted too. The deer prepare for another bitter and cold winter. The yearly cycle is gruelling for man and beast, but as I hope and believe the park's millions of annual commuters and visitors will agree, the results are worth the toil. With its unique blend of wildlife and plant life, historic buildings, sweeping landscapes and formal gardens, Richmond Park is a gem among parks. And for many, it is not just a route to work. It is a Pandora's box of hidden treasures. With more than five million visitors a year, there is an increasing pressure on the park. But there are simple things we can all do to help protect it. As Richmond's most famous resident, Sir David Attenborough says, tread lightly, Take nothing from the park, leave nothing behind, and respect the wildlife.